ICT CRAM, English Language Conventions, Inappropriate Verb Tense, 11th Grade Skill Level, ACT Foundations, Question 6, Mean Medicine, Antidote Your Ignorance, ACT English Foundation, Verb Tense, Question 6, Does the following text have an inappropriate shift in verb tense? If so, fix any verbs that don't match the tense of the verb in bold. Christopher completed his exam with 20 minutes to spare. So he spends the extra time carefully reviewing his responses. Here's what you need to understand. The tense of a verb tells when the action takes place. You should generally avoid shifting tenses within or between sentences unless you need to reflect the time change. Let's take a look at this example. Kathy grew up in Cleveland, but now she lives in Pittsburgh. The sentence shifts to the present tense to reflect a time change. This is appropriate in this instance. We shift from Kathy's younger years, as indicated by the verb phrase grew up, and then to her present adult self with the verb lives. As I previously stated, this shift in tense is appropriate. Or check out this second example. Rachel grabbed the microphone and sings to the crowd. There is no need to reflect a time change, so both verbs should be in the same tense. The first featured verb, grab, is written in the simple, singular, past verb tense, so we know the singing also took place in the past. However, the second verb, sings, is written in the simple, singular, present verb tense. There is no need to reflect a time change. Both verbs should be in the same tense in this instance. Shifting the tense of the second verb to its present tense verb form is incorrect because this creates inconsistency in the overall tense of the sentence. Change things to its simple, singular, third person, past tense verb form to restore consistency. There you have it. We've changed sings to sang. It's simple, singular, third person, past tense, verb form. We have restored consistency in this sentence, and this new verb form is correct. However, you may shift tenses if you need to use the present tense to state a general truth. You may also shift to the present tense to discuss the nature or contents of an artistic work, such as a book, film, or painting. This use of the present tense is called the literary present tense. Let's take a look at this example of a general truth. Mr. Smith taught his students that the brain uses around 20% of the body's energy. The sentence shifts to the present tense to state the general truth. This shift is appropriate in this instance. We shift from a lesson Mr. Smith gave in the past to a description of a biology fact that he shared during this lesson that is also a general truth. Hence, our use of a shift to the present tense is warranted. Let's take a look at this example of the literary present tense. Shakespeare wrote Romeo and Juliet in the late 1500s, but the play explores themes that are still relevant today. The sentence shift to the present tense to discuss the nature and contents of the artistic work, Romeo and Juliet. This tense shift to the present is appropriate in this instance. All right, back to the original question, now for the solution. Look at the verb in bold, completed. It is in the past tense. However, notice that the second verb, spends, is written as a simple, singular, third person, present tense, verb form. There is no need to reflect a time change, so this is an inappropriate shift in verb tense. Don't be confused. The object of the verb spends is not a general truth, although the event that follows the verb spends occurred in the past after Christopher completed his exam. Reviewing his responses is not happening now. Change spends to its simple, singular, third person past tense verb form to restore consistency. Here you have it. We've changed spends to spent. It's simple, singular, third person, past tense verb form. We have restored consistency, and this verb form is now correct.